End of 2014, I just had been diagnosed with testicular cancer. I had surgery. I got an email from a man named Bivik. Bivik wanted me to film a TV show in Durban, South Africa about food, lifestyle, just simply having a good time. I was really intrigued by this. Bivik sounded extremely professional to the point where I became very convinced of this being real. Bivik wanted to do some Skypes. He wanted to talk to see if I was the right fit for the role of going to South Africa to film this TV show. Now, I wish I had conversations from this. This is the part where it would make this video obviously a million times better. Unfortunately, Skype actually deletes all your history after a period of time. And if you contact Skype, they're not going to give you anything. I was trying. I was really, really trying. I was saying that it was uh, there was an investigation going on. You know, I needed to gather evidence. Side note, if you do know a way of getting history, please do let me know. I would love to see it. During one of his conversations, Bivik went on to tell me that he too uh, is battling cancer. And in multiple conversations, Skype conversations in which I actually had a lot of these Skype conversations, probably in the range of like eight to 10, he went to tell me that his family is very wealthy, that they're in the oil business. He's funding this program because he can, because it's it's no problem for him and that he thinks it's going to be a great hit and it's a fun project for him. Had sent me over a contract, one that looked extremely legitimate. I had been offered a large amount of money in my contract in which it actually went up to 180,000 without me even asking for like two weeks of work. I still have never, not even close to make that much money in such a short period of time. Initially, the contract actually said that I would get a 7.5% royalty on the TV show as it airs. That actually went up to nine and a half percent without me even asking. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Red flags, red flags. How could you have not seen that there's something fishy going on? Part of me, of course, during this time was thinking exactly that. But the other part of me was like, this is, could be really cool if this is legit. Like, there's nothing really telling me that he's lying yet. It was the end of December and I had signed a contract to be going to South Africa. I was excited. I was about to launch Furious Formulations, my supplement company, and its first product, and I was going to be putting all of that on hold in order to go and film this. Today's video is sponsored by the good folks at Surfshark VPN. In today's world, if you're on the internet, no matter where you are in the world, you need to be on a VPN. And Surfshark VPN is definitely the one to have. I'm sure with what's happening in the world today and us just spending too much time at home, we're more than likely spending a lot more time on the internet. And there's a lot more people out there during this time trying to take advantage of you, and so you have to keep yourself protected. If you didn't know, Netflix is different in every single country. Here in Canada, Netflix is, eh, we have our selectionists, eh. The US has a lot more shows. All I have to do is switch my location to the US, and boom, I have the US Netflix. Another hack, which I thought I knew all the hacks for traveling, is the fact that when you are actually booking flights, which I hope happens for a lot of us very soon, is that prices differ depending on which country you are presently in and buying from. So I can check prices in Canada, I can check prices from Poland, from India, from anywhere in the world, and you'll find significant savings depending on what country you are ordering from. Go ahead and click the link in the description below to Surfshark VPN. And when you do, make sure you use coupon code FURIOUSP and you'll get 83% off plus one month free. That's awesome. So thanks again to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Everything was going to be organized. I would have my own cameraman down there. Uh, I'd be able to direct it, produce it. This was fun. This was exciting, especially as somebody that a, a, has been a creator for so long. This was awesome. I was going to be taking a chartered flight to South Africa, and two days before my departure, he went silent. All communications gone. I tried to call every number he had. I was calling him on his Skype, on his phone number. I was pissed. For like two, three days, I was pissed. Well, I was pissed off for much longer, but for two, three days, I was calling him nonstop. Like, I was supposed to leave. I was supposed to put, my, put everything else on hold. I am more than certain this happened to other influencers as well. The reason I say this is because one of my best friends, Alex Mandel, well, 
It happened to him six months later. How do we start this, man? I don't know. This is this is a it was a, a wild a wild offer, and and we almost I think we almost got kidnapped. Did we almost get kidnapped? I, or I really I, I don't know what was going to happen, but uh, um, no, I what remember, happened? To, I remember, yeah. What? Yeah, sorry. No, go, go for it. I'm just saying. No, I, I, it, what if we went through with this? Would we show up somewhere? Did you even know where to show up? I wanted to, to go. I was ready to go. I wanted to show up, but there was zero communication after a certain period of time. Um, yes. I want to get your angle on everything. I remember the night, I was at your apartment one day, and you were like on the side talking. I, I forget who you were talking to. Probably like Melissa or somebody else. And um, you were explaining the story. And like, I'm hearing the words. I'm hearing like this scenario that I never thought I would hear ever in my life. <laughs> that the exact same scenario that happened to me. And then I hear the name and I'm like, no way. Bivik? Yeah. <laughs> it was just it was, it was just it was just wild. He emailed me first through a fan email, then through like the messaging on my website. Then he messaged uh, my representation and, and everyone. He was just like, I need to get a hold of Alex. And, uh, so, of course, any offer is a serious offer. So we ended up going uh, ahead with it and figuring out what he wanted. He would send emails that were crazy long. But ultimately, he the offer he gave me was he wanted to pay me $100,000 just to go to Durban, South Africa, to eat food, to explore, to show that it's not dangerous there. An average white boy from LA could go to Durban, South Africa, be safe, and show everyone why they should go there. And I said, you know, I can't do that alone. Like, that sounds crazy. How do I get there? What? He's like, don't worry. This is a deal through Sony, South Africa. We have private jets. We are gonna fly you and any friends you want and give you $100,000. We'll give you 75% of it up front. And you can just take that, come here, we'll have guards for you, you'll stay in hotels. This sounded amazing. And you know, sometimes they say, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. And <laughs> I don't think, well, I never went to South Africa. <laughs> how did it end? Like, how did all of this, like, how come you didn't go? The, well, the weird thing is, is he was very adamant about wanting to do a, a Skype call with me. And so I said, okay, you know, here's the chance at $100,000. If he wants to do a Skype call, let's do a, a Skype call first. And it, it was this young guy, it was young Bivik, who I, I think that's who it was, his yeah. name. Yeah. And uh, he had a broken arm, he was smoking a cigarette, and he's talking, yeah, you know, this is uh, what I do. and. Yeah, I wanted sources to know that this was legitimate. So of course he told me, oh, in LA, if you just want to know how legitimate I am, why don't you just uh, go ask John Legend, he'll tell you. <laughs> Cause I could, you know, cause I know John Legend and John Legend could easily just vouch for him. So let me just give John Legend a call and see, he also told me he's going to be bringing out Kevin Hart. He's going to be, so you know, of course, because I'm on the same caliber as Kevin Hart and John Legend, like this is all makes this all makes sense of why he yeah. wants me there. Of course. But at the same at the same time, it he was very convincing. He yeah. made me believe that no no no, we want someone that's not super famous like that. We want someone that's just like kinda known, kinda has a presence online. Can relate to the people more. Yeah, because the thing is, is how do you relate to like Kevin Harkway to South Africa? Of course he's gonna have security and everything like that. So instead we're gonna have you and you'll just be normally exploring, eating food and having a great time. He did like some videos and pictures of him driving Ferraris, but he yeah. never showed himself driving. He always showed like his hand and like- and No, but I believe, I believe he was in those cars. I don't know if yeah. I believe those were his cars. Right, right, right. I mean, yeah. I have videos and pictures of me in cars that I'll never own myself. So, right, I mean, right. that wasn't too hard to believe that it's him driving. Right, right, I just right. didn't believe that. Because he also told me he had a $1.9 billion business in crude oil. Yes, yes, yes. I remember that as well. And he told me that his family owned the W hotel chain. Oh, 
I didn't, didn't get that one. No, didn't I didn't lucky get that enough one. to get that one. No, mine was that he owned uh, oil companies in an oil field or something like that in South Africa and in Dallas, Texas, where they also yes. owned the uh, private jet company or something like that. Yeah, and he was in <coughs> Dallas, Texas at one point during a conversation, and he was at the W that he owns. My question is, you know, it happened to us six months apart. Who else did he do this to? We talked about this for how many years? I think we talked about this for the past two years about recording this video. Yes. And we we're like, this, this, like, he's still online. It's not like he like disappeared. Oh, I see his name on Skype. When I go on it, I see his name on Facebook. I'm still friends with him. Like, My biggest question out of all of this is like, who else this happened to? Because I want to know how many YouTubers or social media influencers, it might not just be YouTubers um, at the time, like this happened to. Because he was trying to get Roman's information for me. Like he was what? like- Really? Yeah, this guy like convinced me. And then two days before I was supposed to leave, like he went radio silent. He changed his phone number. I couldn't get a hold of him. His Skype was like active, but it was always in a way and I couldn't like call him. It would just go to an answering machine. His Instagram is private, but the follow button says follow back. Oh, so you can see it. Well, he's following me. So but if it's... you click follow back, you'll be able to see everything he's got. Well, I think it'll still ask him to approve I don't... me. I don't think so. Because if he's already following you, I, don't I mean, you can, you can always unfollow him right away. I'm gonna follow you, you, him right now. Are you gonna do it now? Follow back. Requ it says requested. See, that's what I was saying. Oh no! So he's gonna have to approve me. He's gonna be like, why is Alex trying to get a hold of me again? I'm like, because I, I need that 100 grand. <laughs> I need a trip to South Africa. Everyone knows that your dad's in the industry, right? And yes. For you being associated and knowing kind of like what kind of people are out there, and for you to believe it is kind of crazy, no? Like I, I mean, mean, those contracts, the emails, like everything was, it, it sounded didn't. too good to yeah. be true, but it yeah. looked legit. Yeah. Like everything, yeah. he did his due diligence, the contracts had every little thing that you needed to have. He kept saying, check with Sony South Africa, and then- Part two, uh, Alex and Pete go to South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we find Bivik. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, like, we both really enjoy beating him up. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. I just want yeah, my hundred. Be... I want my hundred grand. You take your hundred fifty grand, and we'll be happy. Confronting a given person would be just so rewarding. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although I, I wouldn't know what to do after, cause like you have to go all the way to South Africa, and then like it's like, okay, well I'm done now. Uh, okay, bye. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, we found him. He's like, yeah, it was a scam. Okay. <laughs> like, it was a scam, but like, he didn't get anything from us. No, he wasn't even asking us to pay any money or anything like that. I feel like the scam was just to interact. It's, it's catfishing. Awkward. Yeah, it is. It is. It totally was. So, it happened to Alex. It happened to me. So, a time gap in between me and Alex. And there's a big time gap afterwards. There's a lot of, like, things that I was seeing that didn't make sense to me, but I was justifying it because the proposition was super cool and it sounded like one of those once in a lifetime kind of thing or whatever. For instance, one of those times was when he was actually Skyping me from a hotel room. A hotel room which I would compared to in North American standards, like a Motel 6, Motel 8. He was in there with like eight other friends saying he's having a little bit of a party. Uh, it was cramped up. There was what I would call budget alcohol, the cheapest brands that you can think of. That to me, reflecting on all of this, stood out where it's like, this guy has a lot of money. He's saying that he has a ton of money. And yet, usually, people don't really party in that kind of atmosphere or, or rent out that kind of hotel room to, to have a party. You would imagine something a little bit more upscale. Over the years, there is a lot of choppy uh, messages that I found, things like Twitter messages di directed at a Twitter account that no longer exists for Bivek that he had been scamming other people for other things. He had a charity called Mega Smile Foundation, which no longer exists, apparently. All the fun that people were donating into this charity were actually not going into the charity's bank account but into his personal account directly. As you can see, there's a lot of unknowns because his profiles are private. 
uh, I can't get a hold of him. I hadn't been able to get a hold of him for so many years. So this is where I'm opening it up to you so that we can create a part two, maybe a part three. And if a similar story happened to you as an influencer that might be watching this and his name was Bivek, please uh, holla at me. I want to hear details. Thanks for watching guys. I know I continue to say I haven't been posting a lot. It's been a struggle. Um, I'm trying, uh, but it's it's been an extreme struggle since uh, since you know the last cancer battle last year. Um, so it's uh, we're getting to it one day at a time. But here I am posting another video. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please give that like button, and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.